In this video we're going to talk about some of the key differences between a nuclear power plant and a fossil fuel power plant. We also want to talk about some of the safety issues involved in a nuclear power plant. Here's a diagram of a nuclear power plant. The first thing I'd like you to notice is that everything over here on the right hand side is really just exactly the same as for a basic power plant, for your basic fossil fuel plant. What's new to the nuclear power plant is this stuff here. So our fuel is going to be arranged in rods, fuel rods. I'll talk more about that arrangement later. And there's going to be something called control rods. And they're going to control the rate of reaction. And then in here, in the combustion chamber, the fuel rods are surrounded by what's called a moderator. But the moderator in most nuclear power plants is simply water. So we'd have highly radioactive water superheated throughout here. So we're going to need very strong walls along here because we don't want any of that radiation leaking out into the boiler here. We want the heat to move out, but we don't want any of the radiation to move out. We want to keep the rest of the world isolated from this dangerous radiation. So the walls have to be really thick to keep radiation from seeping out, but also because the pressure is so large. The moderator, this water, will mostly remain as a liquid because the pressure is so high that it holds those water molecules together. And then of course once the heat is drawn out into the heat exchanger here, the water's cooler down here and then it's pumped back into the chamber to be reheated. So this cycle here is very much like this cycle here. But in a nuclear plant we want to isolate these two separate cycles so that we don't have radiation contamination. To get a better sense of how the fuel rods and the moderator and the control rods work, let's look at what a typical nuclear fission reaction is like. It always starts with a neutron. And the neutron will come in and hit a large nucleus of uranium-235. Uranium-235 fissions, that means it splits apart into smaller nuclei. So typically it would split apart into say baryon and krypton and these two smaller nuclei would have kinetic energy. But what's also critical is that more neutrons be produced, perhaps three more neutrons. And each of these neutrons can cause another fission. if it's able to strike a uranium-235. And the way that we control the rate of reaction is by controlling the probability that a neutron strikes another uranium-235. Now it's important to realize here that natural uranium is mostly 238, not 235. It's the 235 that fissions. 238 doesn't fission. So only about 1 in 140 of the uranium nuclei in naturally occurring uranium is going to be U-235. If we enrich uranium, and that's usually what's used in a nuclear power plant, it means that we're going to crank up the number of uranium 235s to maybe 3 or 4 out of 140. And we do that using centrifuges. So all this controversy about Iran building centrifuges was all about uranium enrichment. If Iran is able to enrich the uranium beyond the levels needed for a nuclear power plant, then they can get it up to levels that would be suitable for building a nuclear bomb. So let's begin talking about the fuel rod assembly. 
and we'll begin with the fuel rods themselves, which are just s cylinders, and inside the cylinders are what are called fuel pellets. The fuel pellets are simply enriched uranium. Enriched perhaps 3%. The fuel is kept in pellets because small samples of uranium are much safer than larger samples. And then the fuel rods are arranged into an assembly where we might have a hundred fuel rods. And as we were saying, the more neutrons there are, the more reactions there will be and the more energy will be produced. And what we want is a controllable, sustainable reaction. In other words, we don't want too much fissioning going on because that's going to cause a big explosion. And if we have too little fissioning going on, the burning is going to fizzle out. So we want to have a nice ratio between neutrons and uranium-235 nuclei. And as we said, the rate of reaction is controlled with the control rods. So this is a control rod assembly and it would be lowered down here into the fuel rod assembly. And there would be these guiding cylinders here that the fuel rod would slide into. The rods themselves are made typically of cadmium or barium. And the reason these substances are used is because they're very good at absorbing neutrons. So as we slide the rods into the fuel rod assembly, more neutrons are going to be absorbed and that's going to slow down the reaction. As we lift the control rod assembly, there will be more neutrons available and the reaction will speed up. So within the fuel rods, fissions are occurring and the fissions are the result of neutrons crashing into uranium-235 typically producing barium and krypton, plus another three neutrons. Now if there's a control rod nearby, so here's our control rod, then it's going to be able to absorb these neutrons. And that's going to, of course, slow the reaction. But it's also important to realize that Uranium is mostly uranium-238. So let's suppose we have lots of uranium-238 close by. As it turns out, these fast-moving neutrons tend to get absorbed by the uranium-238. And that, of course, takes neutrons out of the picture and slows down the reaction. So we really need a way to slow the neutrons down so they won't all be absorbed by the uranium-238. So how are we going to be able to slow down these neutrons and absorb the kinetic energy? Watch this animation. The balls have equal mass, and when the white one strikes the red one, it transfers all of its momentum, all of its kinetic energy, to the red ball. And in general, we can say when something collides with something else of near equal mass, kinetic energy is transferred very effectively. So we're going to need something with a mass roughly equal to the mass of a neutron. So what I've drawn here are the moderator molecules, which is usually going to be water, H2O. And hydrogen is, of course, a proton. And, of course, protons have the same mass as neutrons. So when these protons strike the hydrogen atoms in the water molecules, they're going to slow down. So neutron strikes proton, and that reduces its speed, so now it's not going to be absorbed by the 238. Neutron strikes proton, reduces its speed, and now will not be absorbed by the uranium-238. 
and that of course also means that the water molecules are going to speed up. They're going to gain kinetic energy, which is exactly what we want. We want the water to heat up and absorb the energy created by the fission. I have a few IB questions for you. Here's the first one. Pause the video, read it over, try it out for yourself, come back for the answer. So the role of the moderator is to slow down the neutrons. If we slow down the neutrons, then they're not going to be absorbed by the uranium-238. The role of the control rods is to maintain that constant rate of fission. So the correct answer here is A. A second IB question. Don't be surprised if you're confused by it. Pause the video, read it over, try it out for yourself, come back for the answer. The reason that you might be confused by it is the IB actually accepted two answers, either A or C, depending on your interpretation. So naturally, all three of these kind of combine to produce a sustainable reaction. They work together. But in particular, it's the control rods that are used to set the rate of reaction at a constant rate. So either of these answers were considered good. Here's another IB question. Pause the video, read it over, try it out for yourself, come back for the answer. So we're given that the moderator is used to slow down the neutrons. Why is it we need to slow down the neutrons? Well, it's because fast-moving neutrons are absorbed by the more plentiful uranium-238. So if we want our rate of reaction to be fast enough for a sufficient rate of fission, a sufficient number of neutrons are needed to fission the uranium-235. So let's take a look at some of the safety issues associated with nuclear power. The most important issue is storage. And the problem here is that when one of those neutrons strikes uranium-238, that's the isotope that doesn't fission, it actually changes into an isotope of plutonium that is radioactive. And what's worse, it has a half-life of 24,000 years. So it's going to be highly radioactive for a very long time. So the fuel rod assemblies are first stored for about 10 years in what's called a spent fuel pool. So they're stored in water. The water cools them down and absorbs the radiation. For the next 40 years, they would be placed in a dry cask. And then we have the real problem, because after that time, they should be put into some sort of permanent storage. One possibility is to send it off into space, but the storage areas that are generally chosen are deserts where there's no water supply, and so there's no water supply that could be contaminated. The second on the list is the risk of a meltdown. This picture here is from Fukushima, where we saw that the devastation due to a natural disaster, a tsunami, was made far, far worse because of the nuclear power plants. Other important examples of meltdowns were at Chernobyl and Three Mile Island. Often when people drive by a nuclear power plant and they see the steam coming from the cooling towers, they're concerned that there might be radioactive waste coming with that steam. As it turns out, that's really well controlled and in fact a nuclear power plant would put far less waste into the atmosphere than say a coal power plant. The next issue with nuclear power is the mining of uranium itself. And if that mining is done in a country where there aren't sufficient regulations and there's cost cutting and there isn't sufficient attention to detail and to the science involved, then mining of uranium can be very dangerous to the workers, 
because radon is released and that can cause lung cancer and the land itself can be left in a contaminated state. And finally, as I said before, when uranium-238 absorbs a neutron, it becomes a dangerous isotope of plutonium. So the possibility of producing weapons-grade plutonium heightens with the use of nuclear power. So let's summarize the big ideas on nuclear power. And I think we have to start with the idea that the rate of reaction depends on the number of neutrons available to fission the uranium-235. But we've got to keep in mind there that uranium-238 is much more plentiful. So we do that with the control rods that simply absorb neutrons and also the moderator which slows the neutrons so they are not absorbed by the uranium-238. And then the fuel rods themselves, remember that's going to be pellets of enriched uranium. Enriched meaning that more than one out of 140 of the uranium atoms are going to be uranium-235 and the pellets are contained within cylinders. And then finally, in terms of safety, we talked about issues such as storage, meltdown, mining of uranium, and weapons grade uranium as being the key dangers associated with nuclear power. And that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much.